Good morning and welcome to my hobby bench once again and yes I am still doing things at the hobby bench because of the weather in this state and the fact that spring is here but today it's just 36 degrees and pouring rain so probably won't be out running any engines today but what I do have for you is something very special on the table today and I know in the past past video or videos I've mentioned this phrase one time before if you can ever find a four-stroke engine under a hundred dollars buy it well I'm gonna amend that statement by saying if you can ever find a like new 120 size four-stroke engine for under two hundred dollars buy it because that's exactly what I did so on the table today you'll see that I have this beautiful Inya engine and as I just said this is an Inya 120 four cycle not the R120 this is the original 120 four cycle engine this is the one that was modeled after the 90 and this engine came out in 1984 and I I think I featured it on the channel. I've had a customer one, or maybe I had one years ago. But uh, this engine is, I saw it on eBay and it was listed as a, a make off, or no, not a make off, it was a buy it now at well under $200. So I was like, yeah, I looked at it for a few days and then I was like, yeah, I'm just going to do it. So I did it and I'm glad I did it. And the thing, the story, the short story with this engine is that the fellow that sold it, said he bought this for his father in the early 1990s. Now, he had indicated that maybe it had been bench run, and maybe it has, but it's, for being bench run, having been bench run, it's amazingly smooth, has great compression, and isn't locked up at all. So, what I want to do here is I want to show you the differences between, I've got my Inya 90 here, and you're not going to, I'm going to move this exhaust out of the way. You're not going to see a whole lot of differences here. If you look at those two engines side by side, you'd say they're the exact same engine. Now, there is a very subtle, very subtle difference here, and I'll get to that. But I mean, so this R, not R120, this 120 four cycle engine was directly made from the 90. In fact, this is just a bored and stroked version of the engine. So it's got the exact same everything except the bore and stroke is different. Now the only difference you can really see between the 120 and the one in the 90 is right here, this gap between the head and the cylinder. And you can see a slightly larger gap there. That is the stroking of the engine. So it's got a longer connecting rod. The bore you're not gonna see, but I mean, I, otherwise, these engines are completely identical. The only other thing that makes them different in appearance is the 90 has it saying it's cast. The cast says 94 cycle, whereas the 120 has that 90 ground down into a little circular region and it's stamped 120. Aside from that, you'd never know the difference. Now the only things that I thought were, or a couple of things that are missing on this engine was, as you can see on this four cycle, it's missing, this is the 90. This one is missing the choke mechanism and that little uh, rubber sealing piece here that the choke mechanism would fit up against. Not a huge deal there. But the only other thing I've noticed that I thought was interesting about this was this drive hub. Now see the 90 drive hub is just kind of like straight and doesn't have any real shape to it. This one looks more like an OS drive hub for like a 90, FS90 or whatever, because it's flared out. And so I thought that was weird, but because of the fact that I know that Inya engines have this recessed front bearing, I know that this is actually a stock drive hub because it's milled for that recess and of course it's it's an Inya and you can see that slightly recessed bearing that's held in with a circlip. And the other thing that's interesting about this is back in those days a lot of people were still drilling props to uh, 
engage in the drive hub. So these are little things that could just be taken out. But that was the only thing that I thought was odd was this drive hub here because I looked at a whole bunch of Inya 124 cycle images on the web and I never saw one like this. It's almost like I think it, they were all like this when they first came out and maybe some of the later versions they they changed that. The only thing with these two engines is which is kind of it can be kind of a pain in the butt sometimes is this prop hub prop nut mechanism thing here because see this is your prop nut it's not just a standard nut it's an encapsulating nut which means that you have to ream whatever prop or props you're going to use to that diameter uh, to fit them onto the engine and that can kind of be a problem because it kind of makes it so that that prop then is a very dedicated prop to this engine so as such I don't have just you know duplicates of every size prop I probably have one that I have reamed out and I'll probably have to ream out another one to this size just to run this engine I've got one I have one prop size that I use for the 90 but for the 120 I would need a slightly different size so it's like I'm gonna either have to invest in a couple more props and then just ream them out and then they just be the Inya props that's the only thing that's odd about this now the other engines that share this same type of thing are I think my uh, OS FT 240 Pegasus maybe even the Gemini maybe some of the OS twins have this type of thing where you have to really ream the prop out but this engine is it looks brand new and it came with something that I'm going to show you here I took it off now this is the exhaust that came with it this is the exhaust that was stock with the 90. Why the 90 would have a painted black exhaust and the 120 doesn't, I don't know unless that was just one other thing that they uh, did to make them slightly different from each other. But it came with this little mechanism on here and this is something that somebody manufactured. Because all Inya four-stroke engines have this forward-facing glow plug, what was on here was this interesting little device, which I'm not sure where this piece came from because it's it, it fits right over the top of the plug and then you screw it on there and it makes a connection to the top of the plug. And then this grounding part was actually screwed onto the rocker cover here. And I could actually use this. I mean, I usually use just alligator clips to, to do this. But this would have been a, you know, a nice thing to have in there for an in-cal. And it looks like they had some kind of a RCA jack or some kind of strange plug that they would plug in there I'm not exactly sure but that's the other thing that came with this engine other than that it didn't come with any tools accessories manual in fact it didn't even come in a Indian uh, 120 uh, four cycle box the box was this was an Inya 60 four cycle box it fits in there but anyway so I wanted to just take a quick look inside just this rocker cover here real quick and see what it looks like in there and I know it's gonna look brand new but I wanted to see if, I haven't oiled this or anything so I'm just curious what it looks like in there um, oh geez I just lost my train of thought it was kinda of gummy feeling coming off there no it's pretty dry it looks like there's a little bit of dried residue in there. Now you might notice that Inya rocker covers do not have gaskets. Gaskets on rocker arms and rocker covers is not really necessary. And I know Sato has them and whenever you buy gasket kits from them they always have them. They're really not necessary. You don't have to have that. It's not like there's a massive amount of oil that oil migrates up the push rods. And if you oil these things like you're supposed to anyway, um, they'll have a little bit of oil up there. But it's not like these things fill with oil, so it's not like they're going to you know, massively cause issues, oily issues on your plane. So gaskets up there are not really that necessary. But our valve train operates really well. I haven't checked the valves on it. I haven't done anything like that. I just kind of wanted to look at the overall condition up here. Uh, the other thing that is of curiosity which is kind of cool with these Inya carbs here is you see how short this throttle arm is and how it's possible that your clevis can get in the way of this big boxy carb 
The thing that's beautiful about these is that you can easily replace these ser these um, throttle arms with just a servo arm from any servo at all. You just grind it down because it's just held in with a screw and that's almost exactly the same size as a screw head for a servo anyway. So you can just easily just take a long servo arm off. I've done it many, many times on these engines and grind it down so it's flat and fits in there nice and screw it in place and you've got a nice longer servo arm. Then you can make it go upwards or you can make it leave it down like this. But the fact that this doesn't have a choke mechanism, not a big deal. The only other drawback to this is that this is the extent of what I can do. I don't really know that I'm going to pull the head off and look inside there. I don't know that there's any need in doing that because I know it's gonna look really nice. This is an engine that I feel completely comfortable with just putting on the stand and running as it is and treating it as if it was a, a break-in. But obviously what I'll do here is as long as I've got this cover off, I'll check the valve lash, make sure that's fine. And then this will add this to the list, the long growing list of engines that I've got this season and probably going into next season to run for this channel. Quite honestly, I'm not sure how I'm going to get all these engines run because it's one thing to, you know, just run an engine. And many of the engines I've got in the closet behind me are brand new. Brand new. So if I do a run, I'm not really getting them broken in. I would need to at least do three or four runs to begin the break-in process. So it, as it turns out with this channel and with the engines I have, I have a lot of engines in the past and now and will in the future that have one or two runs on them and that's it. Because there simply just isn't enough time in the day or the year for me to sit there and do complete break-ins on all of these engines, much less film all of that. So you will see this engine run. I was really wanting, I, I think I did a couple of, I know I did, a couple of runs with this Inya engine last year, this 90. It was, a, it was one that I was wanting to run again this year. Maybe I'll get to it, maybe I won't. I don't know because quite honestly, I'd like to run this one. And like I said, there's so many engines. I got four engines here in front of me that are all new and have never been run. Well, one of them has been run. I've got four here just on the table, five including this one, not to mention the stack of boxes in the closet that I've got. And I can show you a partial, I can show you an image of that because I just took a picture of that. Many of the engines I've got all need to be run, would like to be run. They're asking me to be run. So I'm going to do the best I can to get a lot of those things run, but I'm also servicing engines for other people, which means that most people want to see their engines run too. So it's going to be a lot of engine runs this year, I'm hoping. Otherwise, I'll have engines to run for years to come. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you all for watching.